Hey everybody, this is the third and last part of my little series on PragerU. Today, we're going to be talking about Yoram Hazoni's absolute banger of a video, What Was the Enlightenment? And let's just get into it. So, there's two arguments that Hazoni makes in this video. One that I care about, one that I don't. The first argument Hazoni makes, the one I don't care about much, is that progressives are putting an undue weight on the historical importance of the Enlightenment period. Consider the U.S. Constitution, which is frequently said to be a product of Enlightenment thought. But you only need to read about English common law, which Alexander Hamilton and James Madison certainly did, to see that this isn't so. For those who don't know, the Enlightenment was an intellectual movement spanning the 17th to the 19th century that is generally considered to be extremely important to the modern formation of philosophy and science. And his only thinks that we give it, give the Enlightenment, too much credit. That many of the ideas that were codified in this period were arrived at earlier, and that the reason we suppress this reality is like political correctness or liberal groupthink or something like that. So why give the Enlightenment all the credit? Apparently, because it doesn't look good to admit that the best and most important parts of modernity were given to us by individuals who nearly all held conservative religious and political beliefs. So let me just say, I don't buy this argument that Hazoni is making at all. Of course, monumentally important ideas and events occurred before the Enlightenment. Of course, no one's ideas come out of a vacuum, fully formed. But I don't think any awful SJW professors are trying to conceal this reality. I'm not going to justify to you why I don't buy this argument here. I'll leave a short footnote if you're interested, but the truth is, PragerU literally cannot make a case for anything without invoking some unproven, shady, leftist conspiracy conspiracy that's trying to silence their truths. We've seen it in every one of the videos we've talked about thus far. It has become taboo, or to be precise, not politically correct, for a woman to articulate what she really wants. And it's blatantly done to poison the well and produce a sense that the only people you can trust is Prager you. It's honestly toxic, repulsive behavior, and I don't want to engage with it more than I already have. But anyway, uh, the thing I really care about in this video is Hazoni's second argument. That the Enlightenment, or rather the pursuit of reason that its philosophers advocated, was like, kinda bad. In essence, Hazoni thinks that the pursuit of rationality and logic is outright dangerous, at least if it's taken to its extreme. Look at the French Revolution, or at Karl Marx. The father of communism, Karl Marx, saw himself as promoting universal reason as well. Or whatever, look at Adolf Hitler. So did the supposedly scientific race theories of the Nazis. Hitler thought his policies were based on science and rationality, and he ended up killing a huge number of people. The greatest catastrophes of modernity were engineered by individuals who claimed to be exercising reason. So, there's really only one conclusion we can come to, right? That the pursuit of science and reason must be a problem. As Hazoni goes on to say, we, like the great conservatives of our past, should be skeptical of human reason. Now, he doesn't mean skeptical in the sense that science and philosophy and critical theory are already skeptical, constantly attentive to the processes through which we arrive at conclusions, concerned about how reliable those processes are or can be. Rather, by skepticism here, he means something closer to closed-minded or willfully ignorant. Most of the progress we've made comes from conservative traditions, openly skeptical of human reason. Rather than leaning on reason primarily, he thinks we should embrace the traditional knowledge of our nations and cultures. Sure, we can have a dash of thinking in there, but thinking should essentially be the junior partner of tradition, blending together into a seductive slurry known as common sense. They defended national and religious tradition, even as they cultivated what they called a moderate skepticism a combination that became known as common sense. So, right off the bat, I want to make it clear that I don't have a problem with the traditions that individuals choose to follow. Lots of people respond to the structure and sense of community that tradition provides, and it's not my place to inform you that you're wrong to do that. That said, Hazoni is clearly not making an argument about what individuals should feel free to do. 
but rather about the bigger picture. He thinks tradition should play a primary role in the ideas of society at large, in how government should behave, in what is moral and immoral, and in how we go about figuring that out. And, as you might guess, I have some major problems with that line of thinking. So, let's go through those as quickly as possible. First, Hazoni is very clearly throwing the baby out with the bathwater here. Like, sure, Hitler thought that he was being rational and that race science was super smart and correct. But why would we take that fact and extrapolate that science and rationality are bad things? I would argue that they're good and that they're particularly good at explaining why bad ideas are bad. It's actually fairly obvious why what Hitler did was wrong. And it's obvious because of basic moral reasoning and intuitions. Obvious because race science is pseudoscientific bunk that can be disproven. And so I just think it's tragic, kinda, that the second Hitler comes to town and says that he's a rational big boy, that Hazoni is just like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't like Hitler, but he says he's being rational. I guess we should just stop thinking then. Second, Hazoni's argument isn't helpful. Like, cool. Let's say that Americans come from the American culture and nation, and as such, we should try to honor American traditions. Well, okay, but which tradition should we follow? Like, specifically? Slavery? Genocide? Imperialism? I mean, we've certainly done all those things in the past, so should we just keep rocking in the free world? And look, Hitler certainly thought he was honoring the tradition and culture of the German people. So, was he right or wrong? And how do we figure that out? And I know what Hazoni would say to this. Well, we shouldn't just rely on our cultural tradition. We should also supplement that with our own thinking. That'll give us the common sense we need to sort this stuff out. Separate the good traditions from the bad. And this leads me to the third problem I have. Common sense, and particularly the way that it's deployed here, is a useless coward phrase. It's just another way of saying, my ideas make good sense, and your ideas are stupid, and I know that because I'm just thinking like a normal person. Hazoni doesn't express any particular idea for how common sense should work, how we can use it to maintain the good traditions and reject the bad ones. Rather, it's used here as a catch-all phrase to refer to whatever Yoram Hazoni thinks is good and wants to use tradition to justify. But okay, now that I've explained why I think Hazoni's argument is bad, I want to change the topic. Because when I watch this video, it doesn't leave me thinking about how strongly I disagree with it, how it doesn't work for me on any level. No, it leaves me asking one question. If PragerU thinks this argument is a good one, if they are comfortable endorsing it, having it represent their channel, then shouldn't they be using Hazoni's common sense, his uncritical prizing of tradition, extremely often, like, all the time? See, PragerU has never had a problem repeating itself. At the very beginning of this video, I talked about how often they recycle the talking point that leftists have some ridiculous conspiracy. I can't remember how many times I've heard a PragerU speaker talk about how Western values are great because they're a synthesis of Judeo-Christian and ancient Greek values. Why has Western civilization been so successful? The best place to start is with the teachings and philosophies that emerged from two ancient cities, Jerusalem and Athens. These institutions developed because of a peculiar dynamism of Athens and Jerusalem, a synthesis of classical reason and Judeo-Christian morality. PragerU literally has a video called Why the Left Ruins Everything that is essentially just a hodgepodge of other videos they've made. My point here is, clearly PragerU has no compunctions about ripping itself off. So if they wanted to use Hazoni's arguments all the time, they totally would. What's more, from PragerU's perspective, I can't imagine a more useful argument than the one we get in this video. Like, say you want to convince people that getting married is a really good idea. 
Well, why don't we just break out Hazoni's argument? Getting married is traditional, traditions are morally good to follow, therefore, you should get married. Say you want to convince people that our justice system is basically great the way it is. Well, you could defer to religion and God to make your point for you, but why bother? We have Hazoni right here to make the far more efficient and elegant case. America has a tradition of punitive justice, traditions are morally good to follow, therefore, boom boom boom, our justice system is good as hell. And, you know, I could go on like this, forever, basically, just go through other PragerU videos and explain how Azoni's argument would be helpful to their point. But I do think the point here is obvious. When you run a regressive, conservative, morally bankrupt YouTube channel, and you make the bold move of assigning a huge amount of prima facie moral value to the upholding of tradition, then suddenly, when you want to argue something, all you gotta do is point to how that thing is traditional. It's so easy, so powerful. But, see, PragerU doesn't do that. Like, ever. In their video about justice, they do invoke God. In their videos about marriage, they either refuse to make an argument at all or try to bring a statistical analysis to the equation. Married men work about 400 hours more per year than single men with equivalent backgrounds. They go to bars less and a church more. In their videos about capitalism, they argue that that system produces the best outcomes. In their videos about art, they argue that we can objectively measure artistic value somehow. That's why so much contemporary art is meaningless and involves the scatological, meaning urine and feces. Yes, urine and feces. And even in Hazoni's own video, he doesn't really try to argue anything with the points he makes. Like, at the very end of the video, he says a little line about how we should be skeptical of socialism, feminism, and environmentalism. But these new dogmas deserve to be greeted with some of that old Anglo-Scottish skepticism. Okay, sure, let's be skeptical of these things. Great idea, Hazoni. But that says nothing about the quality of these ideas in particular. So why doesn't he just go for the kill here? Just say, point blank, these ideas are all bad because I don't think they abide by tradition enough. Why isn't PragerU ever willing to just say that? Well, here's why I think they don't use that argument, and it's an explanation that makes me pretty happy. I think it's because people would never buy this. Look, while I do think the entire idea of creating a moral system by way of tradition following is vague, unhelpful, and self-defeating, I can't deny that it has a visceral appeal. When you defend tradition, you defend the status quo. You get to maintain the power structures that you've always known, and you get to imbue those structures with a transcendent moral quality, just by virtue of them being the way they are. But here's the thing. That way of thinking just isn't good enough for most people, conservatives or progressives. I'm gonna sound a little hokey here, but at the end of the day, I don't think people are docile by nature. I don't think people are willing to just quietly accept that the world that they're given is unquestionably the one they should have. I think people want more, want a reason for doing what they do, a reason why power is the way it is. And on some level, PragerU knows that. If they didn't, they wouldn't need to bullshit us with pretend arguments about marriage or punitive justice or the leftist agenda or whatever. The billionaires who support them wouldn't even need a terrible YouTube channel because their job would already be done. We'd already be following their traditions. You know, in a lot of ways, I see Yoram Hazoni's What Was the Enlightenment as one of the best PragerU videos. Because it's one of their only works that doesn't feel like it's manipulating us, that doesn't feel like propaganda. It comes right out and says, all that smart thinking stuff, that's actually dumb as hell. You should follow the traditions we tell you to follow, you absolute peasant, and shut the fuck up. In that moment, I have no doubt that this is a sincere statement, that this is the thing they've always wanted to say. No doubt that in this moment, I am looking at the heart of PragerU.
And if there's any takeaway here, it's this. The heart of PragerU sucks major ass, and they know that just as well as I do. So that's the end of the PragerU series. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanted to do it because it was fun at the time. And looking back, you know, I think they're pretty fun videos. I, I really enjoyed making them. Uh, if you like them, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, give me money on Patreon if you want to and have the money. Oh, and I've been Twitch streaming lately. Follow me on Twitch. I've been having a lot of fun playing Mario games. So come by if you want to. I'll leave the link for that in the description too. Uh, okay, this video was edited by Ben from Canada, and now it's time for my Patreon question of the video. Doop boop doop boop boop doop doop boop 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 doo. Finding a Patreon question right now. Going to see all the secrets somehow. Anthony Ludwig asks, Why do you think people conflate their disinterest or disapproval of a piece of media with the lack of objective artistic value? Why do people say X thing sucks instead of I don't like X? Is this actually a problem? And if so, how do we fix it? I don't think it's a problem. I think it's fine to say your opinions as facts. I mean, it's always helpful to make it clear sometimes that, you know, you're not saying the objective reality about a piece of art's quality. But the truth is, it's okay to say this thing sucks ass. You can just own that opinion. You don't have to equivocate that all the time. If someone disagrees, well, there you go. Uh, okay, that's my answer. Thanks so much uh, for the question, Anthony. And I'll see you next time. We're going to be talking about The Good Place.